Y'all look here. They see Snow White. What are you doing, Loretta? Huh? What are you doing, girl? How you doing this morning, baby? Hmm? How you doing? What's going on, Big Gus? Oh my gracious. Gonna be a great day here on the farm today, girl. What is going on, y'all? Jason over here at Cog Hill Farm. I hope you guys are having the best day ever today. I got to tell y'all something. I got to tell y'all something crazy. These boys, I swear these boys, I got to tell y'all what happened to me yesterday. Y'all come on boys. Come on little boys I should say. There y'all go. There y'all go. There y'all go little men. That's right. There y'all go. So, yesterday, I came out here to feed like I normally do. I noticed something that was not right. And that was the little boys, Red and Curtis, were in this pen with Uncle Mo and Papa Joe. And y'all, I was like, how in the world did this even happen? How? My first thought was, is they went underneath here. They went under the fence. I was like, there's no way. Then I thought, maybe Brooke did it. Didn't tell me. But no, Brooke, Brooke didn't do it. She was, she was over there. I sent her a text. I said, Brooke, all the boys are together in Mo and Joe's pasture. And she was like, what? And then she hollered at me. She was over there in the stall, and she hollered at me. She was letting Snow White out. She said, how did that happen? I was like, I don't know yet. So I had to get the boys, and y'all, it was a mess. It was a mess. Um, I wish now I videoed it, but you guys know that with us, our animals come first, videoing comes second. I had to get them out because... Joe was, he was trying to mate with the little boys and, um, cause he's a raging hormone mess, as you can see. So was Mo. They're both in rut. So I had to act pretty quick and get those boys out. So that's kind of what I did. I, I picked up one, took him out, and I just set him out the gate. I didn't even try to get him over here. I just set him out. And then, of course, Joe and Mo were harassing him pretty good and I, I ran and got number two i can't remember which order they were in y'all but um i got him set him out and by the time i set him out joe ran out and ran after whichever one of these little fellas it was here that was that was out first oh man and he weighs probably about 150 pounds so and he's fighting but i did get him in i got him in i finally got him in and once i got him in i could figure out what was going on so brooke came over she helped me get the little boys in because little boys are kind of wandering around and they you all know they think brooke is their mama number two and so they followed brooke on in closed the gate and i got to looking and y'all right here right here i bent it back i couldn't fix this one though but um, I bent it back. You can see where I twisted it back up right there. These guys were pushing so hard this way and broke the fence. That's what they had done. So I fixed it back and then I cut the hot wire on. The hot wire is on now. And this makes me happy that we made a decision to leave these guys over here because I'm thinking if they were over there close to these girls and one of those girls got in heat and they could really smell it i think they may break out some kind of way i don't know but i'm glad that they're gonna stay over here in this area and um be a little bit more separated from the girls and those little boys will be getting fixed pretty soon we've got to call in the dr d and he is going to let us know when he can get over here and handle that for us and y'all i want to give y'all an update on the fire as of right now, we don't know anything as to what caused it or anything like that yet. I have no idea. No idea. 
and we don't want to speculate. And also, I want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. I know Ryan wants to thank you guys too, but um, thank y'all so much for everything. All your kind words, all the emails, all the messages, all the comments. Uh, we can't thank you guys enough for the support y'all have given us. And I just wanted to thank y'all. We even had some insurance um, people in the insurance business or ex, ex people in the insurance business, them that are no longer doing it, retired, reach out to us and tell us uh, what we need to say and report to the insurance company and that uh, they thought that we may get some help on the loss of all the candle stuff. So hopefully we can get a little bit of relief there. That would be um, awesome. Absolutely awesome. And again, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Just y'all the best. Really are. If all the animals are on that side, we may shut this gate. I think they are. Let the emus back over here for a little bit. I like to mix it up. I like to rotate them in and out. It helps with parasites and it helps the pastures too to, to keep the rotation going there for sure. And I'm going to tell y'all what I'm going to do. Hey girl, what's going on Snow White? Let's see here. Honey's going to come see me, but I think Honey will go back to the other side with me. Come on, let's go. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Our pond has dropped probably three foot since we hadn't had any rain, but it is still staying kind of at this level here. So I'm thinking that the, the ground is pretty good and saturated up to this point, but from that three to four foot point further, it hasn't, it's not. And that's, that's mainly because there just hasn't been that much water in there. It's just been, you know, a hot, hot summer, except those one look that one little three week burst of rain we had there so the pond didn't stay in like we wished it would y'all come on but it's gonna get there it is going to get there because it's holding fairly good now there you go nugget there you go go there y'all go how you doing partner how you doing buddy y'all shake a leg so one thing you know I wish I'd have done that uh, didn't cross my mind at the time but I think we're going to come back and do it we may wait till it cools off just a little bit and it's really no hurry either it's just something that uh, I would like to do I would like to let the goats and the donkeys have this pasture over here where the pond is. Um, the goats would clean all of this up. 90% of the stuff you see here is, is not native. It's not native at all. This is all Chinese privet. Privet, 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 privet. That's all Chinese privet, privet. We would love to get rid of that Chinese privet and do it in a way that, um, we don't have to use any type of poisons or anything and the goats are doing an amazing job of doing that for us so here's what i would like to do because you can see it's getting kind of grown over here right here you can see this right here this is where nugget and goaty are now this is the pasture i just opened up and this right here is the pond pasture so if i put a gate here i could close off this pasture where nugget and goaty are right this pasture here i could close it off and they couldn't get over here and they can't get over here, which is what I want. And then I can open this up and this pasture will be connected to their main pasture, the donkeys and the goats, and that would allow them to go to the barn. And they would have all this to, to take care of for us. And the reason why I really don't want the goats and the donkeys and the emus all together is the feeding situation. The emus get a specific type of feed that is for emus and ratites. And it's high, high, high in copper. And it would not be good for other animals to eat it. The emus are not like the donkeys and the goats where, you know, they're going to go in and eat. 
and that be it, the emus are going to go eat a little bit. They're going to go walk around. They're going to go eat a little bit. They're going to go walk around. They're not going to go over there and eat and eat and eat at a certain time. Um, it's just, just not in their nature. So training those guys to go up in the barn, right, at a certain time with everybody else and no feed mixing or anything like that would be kind of a pain. It really would. Let's go check on Snow White. The sheriff and the deputy up there, they have not met Snow White yet. Hey, Nuggo, did you meet Snow White? Hmm, I saw you over here looking. You and Miss Goldie over there. Goldie's still drumming. I mean, she is drumming. Do doom, do doom, do doom. When she turns that head down, puts her beak towards her chin, that's when she's doing it. Let's see if she does it. There she goes. When that, when that beak tips down, she's drumming. I know it don't pick up on camera very good and a lot of y'all don't get to hear it, but it is a very distinct sound. Very distinct. Y'all didn't see Snow White? She ain't come out. Snow White's still inside, ain't she? Yeah. Snow White's still inside. What are you doing there, girl? Come out and see these two big old peacocks. <laughs> yeah, they some big ones now. Yeah, they big. But y'all, Snow White is doing so well. She really is. Me and Brooke are starting to toss around ideas of getting her a... Um, uh, a buddy per se not quite for sure what we're gonna do yet um, but we'll see we'll get her we'll get her a buddy it may take a couple of tries she may not like I don't know if we put a goose in there or if we put a uh, chicken in there or whatever she may not like it so we're going to experiment with that and see what she likes I don't think she'd want a, uh, a emu in there with her no I don't think so oh top capri the silkies how y'all doing i'll tell y'all so our original plans with these silkies were to um build them a coop and put them in the back where the uh the protege garden's going but i'm telling y'all i am enjoying these silkies back here because they are doing an amazing job at number two cleanup they really are silkies are not known for their free ranging abilities or whatever but y'all i'm gonna tell y'all we'll see them way over here we we'll see them way out yonder. And um, you can see right here, they've been scratching. They are really doing an awesome job on handling all that for us. And I'm leaning towards possibly leaving them over here or at least leaving some over here because they have cut down on our cleanup. I bet by half, maybe even more. And I know that's helping with the fly situation. I know it is. So I'm really leaning towards, you know, possibly leaving these guys over here. What you think, Snow White? You don't mind them, do you? And they don't roost like on stuff like a normal chicken because they can't fly, so they're not roosting on the fences or anything like that and causing a big mess. I, what I may do, if I do anything, is move the hens over there, have the roosters over here, and usually the roosters will calm way, 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 way down if there's no hens around. Y'all look here. They see Snow White. They're not paying her too much attention, though. But they definitely see Snow White. Look, Snow White sees him now. Look at this. All right, y'all be sweet to her now. Y'all be sweet. Going through a little rough spot. Which is getting better now though, guys. Getting better. All right, Snow White. Me and Mama got a job to do today, girl. Cause you know why? Fall gardening is around the corner. Even though it's 110 degrees outside and it's the middle of August. 
We gotta be thinking about our fall garden. That's right. Maybe we'll bring you some of it when it uh, matures. I bet you like some kale and some collards and some greens, wouldn't you? I bet you would. I might want you to do that to me. You reckon? In about 30 minutes to an hour. Ooh, <laughs> when we that get started. feels good, doesn't it? When we get started on this garden. Oh, they want me to make them a mud hole. So they can roll I around. I swear. <laughs> you know, they across the street over there from Loretta and Gus, but Loretta and Gus is rubbing off on them. I see her. She's eyeballing that mud hole now. She wants it. I said, don't put it on me, put it in the mud. It makes it better. All right, Goldie, I'll leave you to it. We're fixing to have a party, guys. A party. Y'all hear me? We're going to have a party, girls. Martha, Laura, here comes Mabel. So this is going to be the fall garden this year. We're going to get this ready. We're going to pull this tarp back. We got to cut all this around it because we couldn't cut it with a tarp here because it would have sucked it right on up in there. And that would have been a total disaster. So move bricks out of the way, pull the tarp back. I think I'm just going to put the bricks far enough where you can get in there and cut because I'm going to re-tarp it when I get through today. Does that make you sense? You mean put them back over here? Yeah, yeah, okay. where you can get in there. All right, let's go to work. Just be careful with them bricks because the black widows like them. Y'all hear me say it all the time. Be careful with these blocks because of black widows. And there she is. See the hourglass? There she is. another one right there oh yeah it's the second one I didn't sing right there there's number three right there y'all oh I see it see it yep I see that red right there they like to hide in these blocks now yes, they might I promise some clothes and I'm extra careful. I'll look at every single one of them before I pick it up. All right, we got it done. I think this garden plot has more rocks than any of them. I think it's been growing rocks. It is so many rocks in this one. Since it's been covered up, the rocks have been steadily multiplying. <laughs> yeah, what it looks like. That's my little pile. That's not even... A dent in it. I always feel like if I get them out, you know, every time we do it, then it'll hey. get less and less. But this show is a lot of rocks. It's a lot of rocks. All right, we're gonna cover it back up. We're gonna cover it back up. How are you looking over there? I'm pretty good. You can have a little bit if you need it. All right. Let me get a couple of blocks on it. Just watch out for black widows. You just want to put it on the corners and pull it and yeah. see how we are down there? Yeah, we'll straighten it up. Are you glad to have that done? Mm-hmm. Whew! Man. All right, glad to get this tarped. And remember, we have not planted a garden here in over a year. This was our summer garden, spring and summer garden last year. So it's been over a year since we've planted anything here. We cover cropped it, we've tarped it. We've ran the spring tooth harrow through there. This bed is ready to go. And the reason why I'm tarping it is because it's gonna be about six weeks before we plant. 
So I want to go ahead and get this bed prepared and get it loosened up and broken up and run the harrow through there and the tiller through there to get it ready for the fall garden. And I tarped it because it's going to help with erosion, it's going to help with compaction, and it's going to help with weeds. And it's not really, I don't have time to plant a summer cover crop here and chop, drop, and do this what we just did all over again in time for the fall and winter garden. Let's go see what we're planting and let's get some seeds started. All right, y'all, here we are in our grower solution greenhouse and y'all know what time it is. Y'all, if you follow us, you see me do this, I don't know how many times, but a lot. And that is we're gonna start our seeds. And for those that have never started seeds or wanna know how to uh, start seeds, then um, hopefully you can learn something out of this. Number one is that right here, I have got a good potting mix. Now, I used to say that you had to use a seed start mix. You don't have to use a designated seed start mix as long as you get a good, and I stress good, good potting mix and you don't want it to have any fertilizers in it, okay? That's the key. You don't want fertilizer, because these things are just kind of just a little too little. You know what I mean? This is like, this is like a little baby, and you don't want to give, you know, your little baby a full adult vitamin, multivitamin. You don't. So, as long as you got a good potting mix, really good potting mix, and you can make your own. You can. I used to make mine all the time. And it, the, the, the one I used was one, one, one. And that was one part moss or coconut core, one part perlite, and one part vermiculite. And all that stuff you can find nowadays almost to any box store out there. It used to be kind of tough, but now it, it's not that tough anymore. And this is what I had at, I got this at Walmart. I did. I'm not going to lie. I got this at Walmart. I love Pro Mix. I've used Pro Mix in the past for a lot of things. Uh, I got some cuttings that I'm going to do here soon. I'm going to uh, up pot some stuff that need to be repotted. And this will do it all. This is just a good all around seed start mix, or I should say potting mix. And it doesn't have any fertilizers in it. And it is organic too. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, it's getting close. It's getting close. The end of the growing seasons are almost here. And so be on the lookout for your big box stores to put all this stuff on sale. So seed trays, I got my seed trays here. Y'all, anything will work. It really, it really will. I mean, I've seen people use eggshells. I've seen people use toilet paper rolls, newspapers. And y'all, I'll put a link down below to Hoss Tools and Growers Solutions. Both of them are mom and pop businesses, and you know us. We love supporting mom and pop businesses. That is a goal of ours. That is a mission of ours, and that's what we do here. So if you're interested in any of this stuff that I'm talking about, go check the links out. If I got any promo codes, I'll be sure to put those down there as well. And I always, if you were to use our link, we do get a small commission. No extra cost to you guys whatsoever, and it does help our farm out a lot. So here we go. We're going to just, I'm just going to shove this in. What I like to do is I pre-moisten my soil. Uh, you'll notice that especially when you start working with uh, core or peat moss, um, it repels water right off the bat. It takes a while for it to get good and saturated. So that's why I like to pre-moisten mine. That way I'm not sitting over it with a water hose trying to get it moist and then there's a chance that your seeds are going to float up and float out of your tray or into another you know if you have one here it may float out and go to this cell and you don't want that so always just pre-moisten your soil and you want to push it in pretty good you really do you don't want any kind of air gaps in here all right after i got it in here you can see i got it completely full right i like to take my other tray right here line it up I'm not going to bang on it. I'm not putting all my weight on it, but I'm just going to press down on it a little bit. I want to make sure I get all those air pockets out, right? You'll find that your edges, your edges will be more prone to air pockets and uh, not filling up all the way than any other spots on the seed tray. And you just want to come back because it's going to indent some and refill it like that right there. And then I'm going to do it again. 
just ever um focusing on them edges and the corners just ever so slightly i don't want it compacted i want my seed to be able to grow and pop up it looks good it looks wonderful right there so now i'm just going to start making me little indentions and you'll find after i've pushed down on it i've added more soil right there you're going to find some that sink too far that need more soil and i just add a little bit more to it and just keep on going and what i'm doing is is i'm making an indention for my seed to sit in first up is our collard greens you can direct seed greens uh you can make a thick mass out of them i like to do my collard greens like this because it's just easier to harvest and they tend to grow bigger so i'm planting a whole flat of collard greens if um if i got any extras i will just share them with my friends they will not go to waste all right so this one's ready we're gonna grow our herbs in this and our um rutabagas first up is cilantro which i know not everybody likes cilantro all right we're gonna do parsley Me and Brooke love cilantro, so our plans are to freeze dry the cilantro and the parsley. Now, a lot of people plant parsley and deal the same way in the summer. And we're in Alabama, and those herbs, and there's some more too, um, do not like the hot, hot weather. Cilantro being one, they much rather be planted in the fall season or the cooler months in our area now and everybody's different but here in alabama that's what they prefer now we can grow it in the summer and i have grown it in the summer but if it had its choice it would like to fall better all right rutabagas so i love rutabagas i love them made like mashed potatoes some people call them whipped rutabagas i love them like that they're so delicious, they're so buttery, and they're so good for you. All right, there we go. I like to come back with my dry mix to cover stuff up with. It's just easier for me. In years past, y'all have seen me use perlite to cover it up with, because that's what your commercials growers or commercial growers like to do. But I have found this works better for me. Make sure we got a good contact there. Last but not least is our calendula. Last year was the first year that I have successfully grown calendula. If you don't know what that is, that is that beautiful flower. It was that beautiful orange and yellow flower that I grew last year in the fall and winter garden. What makes calendula awesome is that it is a flower that we can here in zone eight grow in the cooler months when nothing else is really growing so it does give you some color but the healing properties of calendula are through the roof just research that i love it not only for all that but like i said it does give your garden some pop but it also gives your pollinators something to go to when nothing else is blooming funky looking seed too look at that like a curly q all right y'all there we go seeds are ready i will keep these guys moist i'll probably water them at least once a day you don't want to keep it soaking wet you don't want it too dry just good evenly moist and they should start germinating in the next few days so here's what i'm planning this year i am trying some new things y'all remember i'm trying to simplify our gardens this year and from this point forward and it's just a learning curve for me on this new property. Uh, but here's what we're growing this year. Number one, you heard me say it, collard greens. We got those started. I'm trying the top chop this year. Uh, I usually grow the top bunch. They're very similar. There's probably, I'm probably not going to see much difference between the two. Uh, of course, rutabagas. Uh, we're going to try rutabagas again this year. The last two years, the super hard freezes got my rutabagas but hopefully that won't be the case this year uh 
I'm trying something new that Hoss offers, which I'm like super excited about. I have not been successful growing carrots here this year, mainly because of the freeze, and I didn't have a good germination rate last year. Uh, this year, I'm going to try their carrot, or it's called the Rainbow Carrot Blend, but it's on a seed tape. And look at this. This is so cool. This is so cool, y'all. So if you've ever grown carrot seeds, you know that carrot seeds are extremely tiny. And what did I ended up doing is, is I ended up just planting them and then you get a whole bunch of carrots. And a lot of people like to thin theirs out, but I never would. But look what Hoss has done for you here. They have taken the guesswork out and got this seed tape, which rolls out. This is 15 foot long per section. I'm really excited to see how this seed tape works. If it works like they say it does, this is gonna be a game changer for me when it comes to carrots. Of course, y'all saw I planted cilantro. I did parsley and that's it. And I bet a lot of y'all are going, well, Jason, what about your other stuff? What about your other fall garden stuff you like to grow? I don't need that many of them. So what I did this year versus I have done in the past is that instead of uh, starting seed trays with a ton of seeds. So what I'm doing this year, instead of what I've done in the past, instead of starting that seed tray and having 50 and 60 plants of something, I've ordered or pre-ordered horses, plugs, or transplants, whatever you want to call them. And so what I ordered with the plugs or the transplants from Hoss is cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, and kale. Oh, and I, I went ahead and pre-ordered garlic. So if you want garlic, you have to pre-order it as well. And then they'll send you your garlic bulbs when it's getting closer time to plant. And that's pretty much it. I didn't grow Swiss chard. My family didn't like Swiss chard. I didn't grow mustard this year. I didn't grow the top bunch collard greens. And I didn't grow my salad mix that I like to grow. Um, mainly because we just I found that we just didn't eat it. If we're not going to eat it, then I'm not going to grow it or I'm gonna grow it closer to the house. And that, y'all, is our fall and winter garden this year. I'm so excited to get started. I say it every year, fall winter garden is my favorite gardening time. I like it better than spring and summer. Uh, even though, you know, you may get more color and your flowers, I love the flowers in the spring and summer gardens. I love tomatoes, but I love fall and winter gardening way more but i hope you guys enjoyed this video again thank you guys for everything and i can't wait to bring y'all along with us as we start a whole new growing season here on the farm and as always y'all be good